When you're learning about U.S. presidents, we rarely learn anything about their wine drinking habits. Well, I'm Paul Guaglini, wine expert with ABC Fine Wine and Spirits, and I'm going to fill in a few of those gaps. Wine played a big role in the life of colonial Americans. You have to think, back at that time, there wasn't a whole lot to do, so wine gave them some reprieve. It was actually thought of as a very healthy beverage. Let's be honest, it was probably healthier than the water that they could drink back then. Our first president, George Washington, was a huge fan of Madeira. The colonists consumed a great amount of Madeira. But Washington wasn't only a fan of Madeira. He actually commissioned his first Secretary of State, a gentleman named Thomas Jefferson, to procure some of the best European wines he could find. And Jefferson did just that for him to stock Washington's cellar at his Mount Vernon residence. Thomas Jefferson once said, good wine is a necessity of life for me. And Jefferson, more than any other president, really had a love affair with wine. Before, during, and after his presidency, wine really consumed his life. Before his presidency, Jefferson was an ambassador to France. And he lived in Paris for many years. And during that time, he really developed a love, for, not just for French wine, but for Italian wine, German wine, Spanish, Portuguese. He really had a love affair with all of the European wines. During his presidency, Jefferson actually had a wine cellar built beneath the White House that stored over 20,000 bottles of wine. Unfortunately, that cellar's been repurposed. I don't know which president did that, but they probably should have impeached him. Jefferson not only consumed a lot of wine, but he attempted to grow wine at his home in Monticello, Virginia. He actually attempted numerous times to plant vineyards. He hired an Italian viticulturist from Tuscany at the time. And they tried and tried and tried to grow vinifera grape varieties. Vinifera are what we think of as quality grape varieties, Chardonnay, Cabernet, Merlot, Pinot Noir. That's vinifera. The grapes that were growing wildly here on the East Coast is a different species of grape, the Vitis Lambrusca, not to be confused with Lambrusco, the Italian wine, but Vitis Lambrusca would be like Concord grapes. Concord grapes make great jelly and grape juice, but not really good wine. I also have to give an honorable mention to Benjamin Franklin. And no, I didn't fail elementary school civics class. I know Benjamin Franklin was not one of our presidents, but he was one of the founding fathers. And aside from being a diplomat and a scientist and an inventor, he also was very widely published. And many of his quotes involve wine. In fact, Franklin once said, wine is sure proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy. Wouldn't you agree with him? What about in more modern times? Before we get to that, like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Lyndon Johnson was the first president to serve American wines at state functions. And then after him, Richard Nixon reluctantly went along. Nixon had a real love affair with the wines of Bordeaux, particularly Chateau Margaux. And Nixon would oftentimes have his aides pour him a bottle of Chateau Margaux covered in a napkin, and then serve lesser wines to his guests. They didn't call him Tricky Dick for nothing. Nixon did a lot of good things with regard to wine, too. Perhaps the shining moment of his administration was his trip to China in 1972. At the time, we had no diplomatic relationships with China at all between the Korean War and Vietnam. So Nixon really opened the door with China. He was the first U.S. president to ever visit China. And on that trip, the final day of a week-long trip all across China, he brought along some Schramsberg Blanc de Blanc sparkling wine and toasted the Chinese premier with the Schramsberg. 
It's the first time an American-made wine had been used in an official U.S. diplomatic situation outside of the U.S. Ronald Reagan, being a California native, was a huge supporter of the California wine industry. He, in fact, is the first one to ever serve a California Zinfandel at a state function. Now it's common practice by all U.S. presidents to use exclusively American-made wines at all inaugural events and state functions. So this President's Day, whether you're drinking Madeira, Schramsberg Blanc de Blanc, or Chateau Margaux, raise a glass to your favorite president, because they may have well done the same to you. Come and visit us at one of our stores, or shop with us at abcfws.com. And check out our other videos.